All right, so 5.3.0 patch notes. They've been delayed on the official website for a day, I believe because of localization issues. So shout out to Marshall from the LR Report for having all the images ready. This is going to be one big update for the quality of life of patch champions. Whatever, whatever that means, I don't know. Just make it a little smoother to play and hopefully some buffs to the worst decks like Nasus and Orn and Pike. Yeah. Okay, so starting out, reviving, instead of doing it with 50% health, it's now with 100% of health. So this is, I believe, after level 8, you unlock revives uh, on individual champions. And instead of coming back with half health, you now come back with full health. Great change, honestly. That, 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 that's like, you get an entire retry. It's like, sometimes you get to the final boss with like 10 HP. It's possible. It can happen. But now, after you lose that first fight because you only had 10 HP, you're now going to come back with full health on the second one after you die. So that's, that's actually, that's a very, very, very big buff. Up next. Wild Fragments from 50 max to 200 max. I, I'm very happy with this. I love this because very often I wanted to do my level 1 versus Aurelian Soul or versus Lissandra challenge. And with only 50 wild fragments stored up, I couldn't actually do that in one single stream. Um, you need exactly 100 fragments to unlock a champion and get them to level 3 or 3 stars. Because it's 30 to unlock them, 10 for 1 star, 20 for 2 star, and 40 for 3 star. So if I have a 0 star champion, I would need 70 fragments, which you can't do. So this is, this is lovely. I love this. This is huge for, uh, for the path to champions, content creators, and I'm sure for regular players as well. Because now you don't have to be forced to spend your fragments once you're close to reaching that cap. Big deal. Very nice. Victory Daily Quest. Instead of four wild fragments, you get five wild fragments. That also stacks up pretty fast. That's a that's a great change. Uh, I, I mean, I forget sometimes, but since I started doing path content like half a year ago, I've, I've been doing my daily quests, and that's the only reason I'm really making any upgrades. And this stacks up fast. Like, you have to imagine that doing your daily quest four days basically gives you an extra day now. Because, you know, that's four extra wild fragments. So this, this is really big. You play for 10 days. Wait, okay, you play for... How many days is that? You play for 10... You play for 14... You play for two weeks, and that's 70 fragments. So if you have a champion unlocked, you play for two weeks, you have a three-star champion. Really, really nice change. This could only... I mean, this makes sense, right? Because they're doing constellations later on. So with constellations coming, you kind of need more wild fragments, I'm assuming. So this is, it's good to do it now. Let us play a little bit of catch up before all the bigger updates start rolling out. Up next, monthly challenge rewards. Cosmic pearls become cosmic blessings. Yeah, lame. Uh, cosmic pearls are really broken. So <clears throat> cosmic pearls are the, I, the relic you could put in a champion that says plus one starting mana. And you get five times as much experience after you complete an adventure. Cosmic Blessing, instead of getting that plus one starting mana, your champion just gets plus one, plus one. Which is infinitely worse. Like, plus one, plus one on a champion, that's like a common power. That's a common item you can find for your card. Cosmic Pearl is an epic power. So this is not even close. This is... Uh, Big nerf, but they were really broken, so I kind of get why they did it. Okay, so that's it for the, uh, I'm assuming, like, the general stuff. And then all these images here are going to be what I think is going to be specific to powers and champions. Okay. Okay, it cuts off at the end, but it says in your deck. Okay. So, Cosmic Presence. Old plus one starting mana where you draw a card with a chime on it, plant a chime in your deck. So, this is Bart's two-star power. Right? This is Bart's two-star power. Plus one starting mana. When you draw a card with a chime on it, plant a chime in your deck. When you draw a card with a chime on it, plant two chimes in your deck. So this is literally twice as many chimes every time you draw a card with a chime on it. Bart was already good, but this makes him skyrocket. I'm pretty sure Bart was like average, like middle of the pack, like below average even. I don't think this changes much. I think Bart was below average. And a change like this. 
the problem with, with Bard was when he his origin got nerfed for PvP, where you don't plan chimes until like turn three. So yeah, this is still going to like go pretty slow, but you can have your your bird on turn one, your Esmus on turn two, and then you know when you draw that chime naturally, it's gonna be two chimes instead of one. And then once you draw one chime, it kind of snowballs itself. Um, I don't think it's great. This doesn't change much in my opinion. This is not gonna make Bard go from like C tier to S tier or something. Not not quite. Not quite. It's a nice change though. <clears throat> Okay, Bart, champion level 9. Old, babbling balladeers. Balladeers gain studded leather. New babbling balladeers is replaced with banana blaster and gains ancient coin. That is the change I want to see. Remove these boring ass stupid cards with actual cool ones. Love it. Banana blaster is in the Bart deck now. And this card is Awesome. I love Banana Blaster, man. That's so freaking... I love that they're doing this. This, like, okay, we're starting out, right? There are, like, a couple or more changes, but the fact we're starting out with showing that the devs are willing to change certain cards for different ones is such a big deal. I want these decks to be more fun to play, and Banana Blaster is infinitely more exciting than Babbling Balladeers. Thank you. I want to shoot big bananas at my opponent, my AI opponent. I want to Lux emote my AI opponent when I give them a big banana. I love this. Very good. Good start. Bard, okay, more Bard buffs. Wow, champion level, he must have been real bad, huh? Champion level 12. Old Cosmic Binding gains Poro Snacks. New Cosmic Binding gains Charging Sigil 1. And Charging Sigil 1, <clears throat> as far as I know, is plus one damage, right? So it used to summon, but it used to be uh, Cosmic Binding summons a random Poro, and now it's deal three to an enemy. Poro at fast speed was very poor. I like the yeah. I don't think like deal three instead of deal two makes a lot of sense, but sure. Um, I actually think this might be worse to be honest. Like in a way, right? Because the way you would use Cosmic Binding if you're optimizing it, I'm not a big bar player. I think I have him like in double digits, and my bard's like level 15 or something, maybe. Um, but what you could do is, before combat, you could deal two and stun something, and then you'd summon a Poro for a blocker. That, you can't really do that anymore. I don't care for this change. I don't think it's a nerf or a buff. It's probably a little bit worse, but, well, you know, with the minus one cost, with a three mana banana blaster in the deck, because this is the minus one mana, that's a lot better. Okay. Up next. Evelyn, champion level 18. Old Warden's Prey gains Shadow Totem. New Vora gains Hearty, hearty ra Rations. And this is regeneration, right? So this is removed. Warden's Prey doesn't get an item anymore, but Vora gains regen. I mean, <clears throat> uh, I don't think this is an upgrade, no. I <laughs> Having two blockers and getting two cards from the Warden Spray is probably better than Regeneration on Vora. Um, I, I, don't, like, I don't play EVE like, at all, so I don't know how much this keyword matters. I don't know how much Regeneration matters. If keywords are important for Evelyn, then yeah, good, because this is not a keyword, but Regen on a 2 HP unit? I mean, I doubt Vora will ever be 2 HP. Uh, that's unlikely to happen. It doesn't matter at all. You want some units to die? Yeah, so th this seems like a nerf to me, and I don't even play Eve. So there... Is that it? Is there... Is There's not more for Eve? That's very strange. <sighs> okay, Nar. One of the worst champions, also bugged. Because Nar was supposed to get a wallop at every round start, but didn't. He only got it once at the start of the game. So I'm assuming that bug is fixed. Yeah, create a wallop in hand at round start. If you already have one, reduce its cost by one. New, plus one starting mana. Round start, create a two-cost wallop in hand. If you already have one, reduce the cost by one. So instead of having a three-cost wallop, you now get a two-cost wallop. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one mana. That can be big. Uh, <clears throat> I think Gnar is extremely boring. That's my problem with Gnar. Gnar feels like an extremely boring champion to play to me because this is level two power. It's like you get a wallop. You stun stuff. It's already like kind of lame 
And then on top of that, his level one and level or his one star and three star power is like give impact. I would like to, uh, I would like Nar to get a rework. I don't I don't like this. It's a buff though. So old heroic refrain gains Grifter's deck. This is when I'm played shuffle a one or shuffle two one mana copies me into the deck. New primal strength gains pyromantic wake. This is deal three to the enemy nexus when played. Uh, great. I I hate this power. I hate I hate the what is this called? I hate Grifter's deck. It's on Janna. It's on Howling Gill on Janna, so you don't deck yourself because you draw so much. But it's such a stupid power, man. I don't care about drawing lame guard for one mana. I just I just don't like it. That's a rare item. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I guess you could break this with some stuff maybe if you have like something super powerful and you get it for one mana. But it is, it's lame. So th this is an upgrade because Nar also cares about hitting the enemy nexus. This hits the enemy nexus after it's played. So this seems like a good change. Kaisa, champion level 4. Ult, NA. So not available. New second skin gains stopwatch. I have no idea what stopwatch is. When I'm summoned, advance me one. Oh, it goes to bur- Oh! This goes to burst? Is that what it means? Instead of slow, it's burst? Wait, okay, that, okay, no, that's really good, actually, then. This used to be, like, second skin was released as focused, got nerfed to slow, but now for Path of Champions, it's, bur oh, that's actually super cool that they're, like, I never saw what this item did, but I love this. That's, that's really cool. Great chain. I'm assuming, like, is this what, uh, Vagar ha has to? This is basically what Vagar has on Darkness, right? Nami also has Stopwatch on her MM Flow champ spell. Oh, I see. Oh, that's really cool. Love that they're doing this. Huge. Good change. Great change. Very, very good. Yeah, I've never played Nami. I heard she's good. I might have to spend some time on Nami. Um, so I'll find that out eventually, but this is a nice change. Okay. Suitable host. This is Kane. I can see in the background. Ult. I don't play Kane. Plus one starting mana. Each game, the first time an ally kills an enemy and survives, create a random dark and equipment in hand. It costs two less. New game start. Create a random dark and equipment in hand. It costs two less. Oh, that's also really good. So usually you would have to kill an enemy and survive and then you get a random dark and equipment that costs you less. Now it's just at game start. So this is literally the power you can get at like one of the nodes. That's that's really, really nice, actually. That's that's a great change. I've never played Kane. He seemed boring to me. I don't even remember why. But now I'll actually try out Kane. This seems like a re really, really big change. It just creates a random dark and equipment. It doesn't even draw it. So you do, it doesn't get it from your deck. You just create one. And dark and equipment, on average, are probably better than most weapons you can get. Also, because it costs two less. You can't see it. Like, it's right here. If I remove my camera right now, you'll be able to see it. It costs two less. That is also applied to the dark and that comes from it. So, good. Great. Okay. Kane champion level three. The darkened lodestone gains skirmisher's saber. The darkened lodestone gains built for the cutlass. I believe this is challenger. Uh, okay, let's. This is quick attack, and this is challenger. Yeah, so skirmisher's saber is quick attack, and built for the cutlass is challenger. It should be zeal. Oh, so the naming is wrong, but it was still correct that it had this. From Quick Attack to Challenger. I think Quick Attack is good, but uh, Challenger is probably a little bit better. Is that really a buff, though? Since you're yeah, because I think on average, the supporting ally is, is more likely to be weaker and pull something that is smaller. And then you buff, like, your actual meaningful card to give plus one, plus one. And that could be a cane, which also has Challenger. Image is right text around. Okay. So quick attack challenger. I think overall this is better. I think you care much more about being able to kind of like dictate the flow of the game with challenger. I think this is better. I don't play Kane, but on average, challenger is just a better keyword most of the time. It's a small change, but it's nice. Kane champion level six. Old wounded white flame gains skirmisher saber. New furious wielder gains mana potion. So this will now be three mana. Three mana furious. Wounded by, I have to see what that item is. Challenger. Wait, what? Challenger. Oh, it's oh, it's because this is uh, 
This is for giving it to a weapon, and this is for uh, the unit. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It makes sense. They're, they're all... Th this is Challenger 2. It's just that there's different item for whether it's a unit or an equipment. So it makes sense. So uh, this loses Challenger. And Furious Wielder gains minus one mana. Again, I don't really play this enough to know. Uh, minus one mana is always a really big deal, though. Yeah, the same effect will have a different name depending on what card it is. So, like, minus one mana is a mana potion for spells, but it's like the ancient coin or whatever for units. So, yeah. Okay, cool. You end up discarding Dragon many times. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know that at all. Uh, the thing is, though, by removing this, you can now put this card, you can put the Darkened Lodestone on the Dragon because it gets Challenger now. Right? <laughs> you lose Challenger, uh, but you can give it Challenger. Yes. Okay. Up next. Old Wounded White Flame gains Warding Charm at level 27. Wounded White Flame is replaced with Shadow Blade Fanatic. It's just... Okay, this card is no longer in the deck. It's just cut out completely. Instead, Shadow, Fla Shadow Blade Fanatic is in. This is a good card on average. So this is probably a big upgrade. <laughs> It, do it doesn't gain Warding Charm at all. It's just, it's just gone now. <laughs> all right. Shadowblade Fanatic is in there. Great. Awesome. Lee Sin, champion level 12. Gruesome Theater gains Mighty Moustache. New Gruesome Theater is replaced with Unworthy Soul. Y that seems great, actually. Yeah, this is a big change because Gruesome Theater is like super... Conditional, you almost... I felt like when I play Lee Sin, I never get to use Gruesome Theater. But Unworthy Soul is always playable, and it's, like, pretty solid stalling slash removal. So, that, yeah, this this card breaks, exactly. It literally breaks. So, Unworthy Soul is a huge upgrade. That's really nice. I also don't like that they're giving the summon a, um, summon a unit to fast speed spells. Feels really weird. So, that's nice. Good upgrade. Okay. Concussive Palm gr gains Grifter's deck. This is, again, the one that shuffles two copies for one mana into your deck. Concussive Palm gains Hextech Fabricator, too. Much better. That, this is a really, really, really good item. This is one of my favorites. One of, one of the most fun things you can do in a Samira run is, is getting this Hextech Fabricator 2 or 3 to... Um, what, what is it called? The Stylish Shot. The one mana that you get back. It's so much fun to do that because you get so many of them and you just keep printing epic items for your champion or rare items. So th what this item does is when you play this card, it grants a rare item to your strongest unit. And then with Hextech Fabricator 3, it gives an epic item to your strongest unit. Yeah, gives a rare item to your strongest ally. Exactly. Yeah. I'm assuming if you have an empty board that it will just give it to the Tail of the Dragon. So you summon a Tail of the Dragon with a... Uh, a uh, random rare item. Fabricator 1 is better than Fabricator 2. Oh, so it's like 1 is the best? Or is it, or is it like dependent on the items that you get from rare? Ah, I mean, awesome change, man. I think people are just super tired of Grifter's deck. I don't like this card at all. I'm also kind of waiting for the moment where we get like path-specific balancing. Because like you saw the Samira nerves, the Janna nerves, and they just made the champion like just not fun to play at all in Path of Champions, even though the nerfs were, like, obviously directed at, like, PvP. Too many bad items in the Fabricator 2, even with Nab removed? Oh, okay. I, yeah, I... I haven't played enough to notice that type of stuff, but I could, I could totally see that being the case. Make Pike 4-mana 2-3 in Path... Exactly, exactly. Pike deserves to be a 4-mana 2-3 in Path of Champions. I want to live that dream of a leveled-up Pike. You don't... You never get to do that in PvP, so why... Would they make it harder in Path of Champions? Isn't that what the mode is there for? Fabricator 1 can gain plus 4 at camp lock. Oh, that's actually... Ooh, that's bad, dude. That could, that could sabotage you. Plus 3 plus 3, more cost, slash ephemeral. Yeah, I guess there's bad options on both. The best way you can get is just the epic one, huh? Up next. Shuriman Preservation. Nasus 2 star. Old, plus 1 starting mana. Round start, grant the strongest enemy, minus 1, minus 0. Plus one starting mana. Enemies have minus one, minus zero. What the hell? That is such a huge change, no? Isn't this ginormous? It's like, okay, 
this can stack on the same unit. Let's say your opponent has a 10-10. The minus one, minus zero will just keep going on that, right? And that's fine, because in like two or three turns, it has minus three attack. But this is just like a permanent level two Nasus Aura. That is so much better. This is so much better for actually getting to the later stages of the game. I love this change. This is really, really nice. Not even minus two. Could you imagine just starting the game and giving everything minus two? This will, like one other thing to note here is this will save you so much damage in the early game. Isn't that a common power? I've never, oh, actually, I think it's a rare. Yeah, I do remember that. You have one that gives your allies plus one attack. You have one that gives enemies minus one attack. But again, just starting with this in a deck that synergizes with it is so much bigger. That's so much better. And landmarks have it, yeah. I think this is huge. Like, you, you have to compare it to what Nas has had before. Grant the strongest enemy, minus one, minus zero. I don't know, man. That's a round start. It does nothing on turn one. This is an aura. This just keeps happening. Your opponent plays a one, one attack unit. Doesn't do anything. It, it, it's a dead unit. Big change. Really big. Makes it much more likely to end with Fearsome 2. Because Nas's level 2 will still add an additional minus one on top of that, right? Okay. Up next, Nasus, champion level 2. Old, bloodthirsty marauder, gain studded ladder. This is gain plus 1, plus 1. New, bloodthirsty marauder, gains giant's belt. This is plus 2 health. So, instead of it being a 4-2, it's now a 3-3. Three, three. That's, that's honestly, combined with this, that's good. This is a good change, because as a 4-2, it's not likely to block. And then a 1-mana 3-3 three, three will also have a much easier time blocking against stuff that has minus 1 attack. From Nasus level 2. Or Nasus 2 stars, rather. I, I think this is a good change. Uh, Synergize much better with what the overall deck is trying to do. I am not a Nasus player. I should become one. That, that might be like maybe tomorrow we play Nasus for the first time or something. We'll see. Okay. Water Recycle. This is Nila's level two. Old plus one starting mana. Create a copy of the first two cards you discard each round in your deck. Then draw one fleeting at next round start for each. New. When you discard a card, create a copy of it in your deck and draw one fleeting at next round start. Okay, I've, that's too much text, man. Oof, I'm a card gamer. I don't read this much. Okay. Create a copy. I don't play Neela either. Create a copy of the first two cards you discard each round in your deck, then draw one fleeting at next round start for each. So this it's just like, instead of doing it for the first two cards you discard, it's just for every card? It's infinitely? That is a really fun change. This is the common power. I, yeah, this is the common power. But instead of it being the first two cards you discard and creating a copy of it, it's just for every single card you discard, you add a copy of it to your deck. And you draw one fleeting at next round start. I think this is really nice. I don't play enough Neil to know, but it's like, instead of having a cap, it's infinite now. The common power is different. Is it? I mean, it doesn't have the plus one starting mana. <laughs> the common power always draws one only. And here it draws one fleeting. Won't you have too much Brickstone? I mean, you can still get rid of the card by just playing it. Uh, but that's the thing, though, with Fleeting. What's interesting to me is that this whole play pattern was supposed to be a thing when Buildswater came out. When Rising Tides was released, they had this casino archetype where it's like, yeah, you can draw cards easily, but they're Fleeting. So um, it's like, for example, with the Brash Gambler, right? It's discard two to draw two, but they're fleeting because it's kind of like an insane effect if they weren't fleeting. So the risk is always, uh, should I play these cards because they're fleeting when I don't really want to use them this turn? Or should I just let them go and have that plus two draw to enable my cards? Like the the, the three mana four three from Piltover that costs two if you draw it this turn. Leveling up Twisted Fate, suit up. Stuff like that. That was always supposed to be the archetype. It's like the risk of drawing very efficiently, but then being fleeting. And now that is like an entire archetype in Path of Champions, kind of, with this water recycler. But you have to think about it less because it just goes infinite anyway. But I think it's really cool. This with Jinx Relic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be ways to break this. Uh, th this seems like it's much more likely to just create a disgusting infinite, which... Lissandra just eats, by the way, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, next. Nila, Buru Lookout gains entra Entrancing Lure, and this is Strike, draw one. Buru Lookout gains Ancient Coin, so this is now four mana. Okay. Probably a lot better. 
Uh, minus one mana, again, it's just a much bigger deal than almost anything else. Honestly, the minus one mana might as well be a rare item. It's so good. And then there's Orn, another awful champion at the bottom of the tier list every time. Sweet Solitude, old. Game start, summon Orn's Forge. Is this, uh, what, what, what star power is this? This has got to be his one star power, right? New round start, create a zero cost fleeting time and dedication hand. Wow. That is so much better. You don't even take up the board space. And it costs zero instead of costing one. And it's like zero cost, fleeting time and dedication, synergizes with so many things. This is, this is a very, very big buff. Sweet Solitude 2. Uh, summon Orange Forge the first time you forge each round, forge again. Round start, create a zero cost fleeting time and dedication hand. The first time you forge each round, forge again. So it's a zero mana, forge twice. Zero mana, plus two, plus two. My Victor dreams of having something like this. That's very, very good. Huge, huge, huge upgrade. Might need to play Orin instead of Nasus. This, like, this actually feels like it makes him playable. And that was it. Those were all the changes. This seems like a really... I, I love these kind of patches. Uh, I hope they do more of these because I don't think this fixes everything, but this is a lot of changes. This is uh, basically like how we'd get PvP patches, but it's focused on PvE entirely. And it feels like there's so many changes that will actually make it so much nicer to play. Go to Reddit to read the text comments. What do you mean with text comments? Oh, like uh, like this stuff at the bottom here? Oh, uh, sorry for the flashbang. Okay, competitive. Ranked, standard, and eternal queues are being extended to 424, so April 24, to account for our new expansion launching in April. So that's a pretty good indicator, which was already in the LOR report calendar, that the expansion will be releasing on the 24th of April. So... Reveal season will likely start around like the 17th, maybe a bit earlier. Patch 4, 5.4 will not have an event pass alongside our new expansion. We are actively working to bring event passes back to LOR in future patches, but in the meantime, we will have a unique quest chain that players can complete for cos cosmetic rewards to celebrate the expansion. I, I, I'm glad that they're being transparent about this, that there's not going to be an event pass. They haven't, they said that it's not here right now, but they will come back in the future, which I think makes total sense. If they're trying to do like the whole Rune Terror revamp, it's nice that we know now that there's not going to be an event pass for this one, but instead we'll have one going forward. Which, and a, and a unique quest chain that I think we probably, I, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is true, but I, I assume we won't have to pay for it then. Um, it's kind of nice to uh, celebrate the expansion. Okay. Bug fixes. Fix an issue where Nars Beast within star power would only create a wallop on game start instead of on round start. Awesome. Chains verbiage on a handful of power to match design intent. Demacian Might 2 is mind and body 1 plus 2. I don't know what this means. Fixed inspiring presence activated when the foe play champion spells instead of only champion units. Fixed undying legion reviving landmarks instead of only reviving units. This is a legendary power. I don't know what this is. Fix an issue where the spirit of the Boer Relic wasn't buffing allies that cost less than one. Oh, this is, yeah, this is the epic one that gives all your one cost, like, three keywords or something. The Martian Might is on strike plus two plus two. Ah, I see, okay. Added multiple items to adventure pools, power rib, RK, anti up. Cool. Um, okay, I think that is about it then. We, I don't know if there's anything for the new monthlies. I don't think there is going to be, like, a new way to get fragments. I'm assuming it's just, like, more general rewards instead of getting ASL fragments, I think. Oh, wait. Early loss powers now only trigger when losing an adventure without, one, without winning one encounter. It was previously two encounters. So if you lose on the first encounter, that is when you get the pity powers. Early lost powers are now a selection of random common powers and allow for re-rolling your options instead of being a fixed set of three powers. Thank God! Everybody hated this. Nobody liked this. So this is, this is an awesome change. Thank you. Thank God. Honestly, overall, great changes. Uh, I, I, I don't have any complaints. This, this will absolutely just make Path Champions more fun to play. And that's all we're here for, right?
quality of life indeed this is this is also a thing where you go like pvp versus pve you can't really be unhappy with pvp updates <laughs> Whereas with PvP, it's like, hmm, maybe last time they should have nerfed Sunken Temple when they didn't, you know? But here, we're just all making decks slightly better and slightly more fun to play, which is awesome. Very, very good. Pearls are up until 5.5. Important to use them. They disappear after 5.5? Where does it... Wait, what? Oh... In patch 5.5, will convert your existing Cosmic Pearls... So that the starting plus one mana becomes plus one plus one. I still have one greater cosmic pearl too. Should I be using that? That's kind of lame. I mean, I get it because they were really broken. What, what people were doing, by the way, and you can do this until 5.5. And I recommend you do if you have one. What you can do right now is if you're trying to level a champion, equip one of the cosmic pearls that give you plus one mana because it's a broken thing to do. Win five encounters in the Aurelian Soul Adventure and then just retire the run. That, that is apparently the most efficient way to farm experience. That will get more difficult. It's still possible, but it will get more difficult if your champion gets plus one, plus one. Because plus one man is like a general thing that you get at the start of a fight. This only becomes relevant when you play your champion. Which very often, like, how much does that even matter? Why only five? I don't know. Somebody's done the math and I, I, I just, uh, I frankly choose to believe it. Why not until before Aesol? Don't know. If somebody... I, I, I implore anyone to do the math again. This is just what I heard from the path experts. I am not really one of them yet. I've been playing a ton. But there is just a lot about Path of Champion that is very intricate and hard to figure out by yourself. So if anyone wants to do the math on that again, please do. I have nothing to confirm or deconfirm. I just chose to believe it because it makes sense when you, when you go time versus investment. I, I, I think it mostly has to do with the fact that if you're trying to level a champion, it will likely just get much more difficult after five encounters. That is my guess. I don't know. Why not just beat Aesol? Yeah, then you lose your pearl. It's converted into the five times amount of experience. Anyway, that is the patch. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. or rather 6.30 p.m. Central European time, I am going to be live and we're probably going to try either Orn, Nasus, or Kane, depending on which one I have the most experience for and which one I can make three stars, just to see how these changes feel. I I'm kind of down to do Orn, though. It might have to be Orn. Not, or Bard, or Bard. Bard actually with the Banana Blaster, maybe it's just Bard, huh? I just think that the power change is kind of uh, minimal. Whereas, you know, entire powers being changed for Orn and As is kind of a big deal. But we have to try all of them. Even, even this change for Kai'Sa I have to try. But that will probably have to be when I do the Kai'Sa cosplay. And I have announced, and I'm going to do it again. I am going to do my Kai'Sa cosplay one day after the first champion gets revealed in spoiler season. So on day... I know what day that is, actually. Probably, like, day three of spoiler season, I'm going to be doing the Kai'Sa cosplay. I will announce that when days are, uh, when, the, when, the, when the schedule is more clear. It's going to be Star Guardian Kai'Sa cosplay, finally. <laughs> so this patch comes out tomorrow. There are no PvP changes. But I'm excited to try this out. 